Welcome back. So today, we are going to now begin our discussion of Aristotle's theory of the good. And Aristotle begins where we should all begin, with the most fundamental question that we could ask. Is there an objective and ultimate good that we should all pursue? Now why ask this question? Well, for Aristotle and the Greeks, this question became important precisely because the Greeks were a trading people. They traveled all over the world and therefore encountered cultures and value systems that were different than their own. What this then caused them to question is their own tradition. Herodotus was a famous Greek historian, and he was well known to have traveled to Egypt and to Persia and to Spain and to North Africa, to the various cultures throughout the Mediterranean. And there he observed various conflicting customs. For example, the Greeks believed that the best way to honor your dead was to cremate them. But the Persians believed that you should bury your dead. And to the Greeks, this seemed to be abhorrent. And the Bactrians, who were to the east of the Persians, they believed that you should actually cook your dead and eat them. And for us, that probably sounds abhorrent. And so thus the question arises. For different people, there seem to be different goods. And since these are different, does this mean that there is no objective good? Does this mean that every person sets their own good and that we are the final determiner or measure of all things as the famous Greek saying goes by Protagoras, that man is the measure of all things? If that is the case, then the answer to this question is no. But be careful here because this is an answer that we feel hits to our own culture a little bit more, doesn't it? If I were to ask you, if we were in the same room together, is there an objective good, or do we each set our own value system, each culture setting a value system, and then teaching it to those who are members of the, of the societies that the culture has dominance over, most of us would tend toward that thing, that we are the measure. And what Aristotle would ask is, fine, if we're using reason to determine this, that needs evidence too. What's the evidence that the good is relative? What is the evidence that the good is subjective? We can't just say that as the default position. So Aristotle, like all Greeks, wanted to know the answer to this question, and like us, who are encountering different cultures in our multicultural society, we need to answer this question too. So Aristotle realizes that in order to answer this question, he has to prove three things. He has to prove that this good that we all seek is objective, that it is ultimate, and that it is universal. So let's take each of these words in turn. To say something is objective, is to say that it's true regardless of what you believe. We all know that eating a diet of high in fats, high in fatty acids that are bad fats will lead to heart disease. So if your grandmother told you, no, that's the healthy thing to do and you should smoke a lot of tobacco along with it, even though that would be her subjective belief, that belief would not be objectively true. So when we ask, is there an objective good for humans, we're saying, is there a goal in our lives that we should all seek regardless of whether we believe it or not? So now this good is an ultimate. To say it's ultimate is really to ask two to, to, to say two things about it. One, that it is good in itself. And the other, is that it is the highest good. So let's take that one first, good in itself. When I was a kid, we all loved to play video games, and back in the day, it was the Atari system. And I had a person who I knew, and a guy named George, that all of us would go over his house to play Atari. 
We would all call ourselves his friends to his face, but behind them we hated his guts. Well, then why did we act friendly to him? Why were we nice to him? Well, because he was the only one who could afford the Atari system, and so we would all go to his house. So here's the thing. We thought George was good, but not for himself. We liked George, we valued him, but not for him. We valued him for what we could get out of him. That's the opposite of being good in itself. It's being good for something else. You right now, perhaps, are valuing the education that you're getting at Salve, but the value you place on it, perhaps, is because of the goal it will lead you to. This education, therefore, isn't good in itself. It's good for something it will get you, the good it will lead you to. Aristotle argues that there has to be something that's good for itself, in itself, and therefore doesn't borrow its value. To illustrate what I mean by borrowing value, think about money. Money is only as good as what it will buy you. If you can't buy anything with money, if I give you all the money in the world, but you can't spend it, then the money becomes worthless, doesn't it? So thus, borrowed value, something being good for something else, means it's not really good at all. It's only good if it gets you to thing that's really good, the thing you really value. Aristotle says, as human beings, we therefore always are pursuing something that's ultimately we value for itself. Otherwise, everything else that we value for something else would have no value whatsoever. So say I decided to borrow money from my friend John, and John said, wait, I need to borrow money in order to give you money. And then John goes and asks his friend, and he says, wait, I have to borrow money in order to give you money. And that can't go on forever. If everyone has to borrow money in order to lend you money, then no one has any money, and therefore no one can lend any, nobody can borrow. So if there is no value in itself, value that is owned by the thing itself, then there's no borrowed value. There's no value for something else. Therefore, Aristotle argues, we must, there must be something that is good in itself, something that you don't value for what it will get you, but precisely when you get this particular thing, you're happy. You, you have gotten what you value. And he says that a good candidate for this is happiness.